Hey folks, my name is Mansoor Sohail. I'm an accountant operating out of Scarborough, Ontario. My specialization is tax for Canada and USA. My today's presentation is for educational purposes only. I will be talking about depreciation schedule today. Depreciation is an annual allowance allowed for usage of a capital asset. A taxpayer will deduct the cost of a capital asset by depreciating it. Mind it, land is not a depreciable asset. Most other assets like building, machinery, vehicles, furniture and equipment are all depreciable. Intangible assets like incorporation costs, patents, copyrights and computer software are depreciable. If a company has assets, their value will decrease. We need to change a line item in the balance sheet because this will decrease. We record this reduction as a depreciation expense. This transaction will reduce income and eventually decrease retained earnings. Let's take an example. Uh, we have an asset that has depreciation expense of 5000 Depreciation expense reduces net income after taxes, as we see in this example. Net income derives the cash flow statement, but since depreciation is a non-cash expense, it is added back to cash. So how would income statement look? Depreciation will be negative 5000. Taxes at 40% 2000. Net income will be negative 3000. Cash flow will look like this, net income minus 3,000, depreciation 5,000, total change in cash would be 2,000. Balance sheet. On balance sheet we'll have cash equals 2,000, asset is reduced by 5,000, retained earnings is decreased by 3,000. Methods of depreciation. Folks, there are several different methods allowed to depreciate assets. Each has its own benefits under certain conditions. Straight line. This method will evenly age an asset for its expected life. For example, we buy an asset for 50,000. It has a useful life of 10 years. Depreciation expense for each year will be 5,000. How do you get this? 50,000 divided by 10 equals 5,000 per year. In 10 years, value of this asset will equal to zero because it will be fully depreciated. If an asset is assigned a residual value, then after 10 years, its value will equal assigned residual value. Residual value is a minimum value assigned to an asset after its useful life. So for example, if we assume residual value to be equal to 1000 this asset will be worth 1000 after its life of 10 years therefore depreciation expense for our asset in above example will be 4900 each year instead of $5000 formula for straight line depreciation is fair market value minus the residual value and divide that value, the result, with useful life. Accelerated depreciation. This method allows a greater depreciation each year. It will produce lower taxable income. Following are few methods for accelerated depreciation. Declining balance, modified accelerated cost recovery, system which is called MACRS for short. Declining method. This method takes a percentage of net property balance each year. The percentage applied is calculated by dividing 1 by the life of asset times an accelerating multiplier. A commonly used multiplier is 2. So for our asset of 50,000 with life of 10 years, if we take multiplier of 2, our declining percentage becomes 1 divided by 10 times 2 equals 20%.
following is an example of a declining balance depreciation asset we have at 50,000 in 2013 rate of depreciation is 20 percent depreciation expense is 10,000 leftover value is 40,000 carried forward to 2014 depreciation rate is 20 percent depreciation expense comes to 8,000 carried forward value is 32,000 2015 carried forward value is 32,000 accelerated depreciation is 20 percent the rate is 20 percent depreciation expense is 6,400 valued carried forward is 25,600 which is right here in 2016 rate of depreciation is 20 percent expense comes to 5,120 carried forward value comes 20,480 which is carried forward to year 2017 rate of depreciation is 20 percent depreciation expense is 4096 and the value that will be carried forward from here will be 16,284 sum of the years digit for this method we take the sum of digits from 1 to the life of an asset in our example we assume that life of the asset is 10 years hence our sum of the years is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6 plus 7 plus 8 plus 9 plus 10 and that equals 55 so what happens with the depreciation for the first year depreciation is 10 over 55 times 50,000 whatever that value is for year 2 depreciation is 9 over 55 times 50,000 for year 3 depreciation is 8 divided by 55 times 50,000 and so on for all rest of the years till you go to year 10 modified accelerated cost recovery system MACRS this is US tax method for depreciation the MACRS method is a predefined set of percentages based on assets useful life these percentages are applied to the base value of the asset each year there are several conventions used in this method depending on when the asset is placed in service following is an example of half year convention which assumes asset is not placed in service until mid-year so with half year convention we see if the asset is to be depreciated for three years for five years for seven years for 10 years for 15 years or for 20 years these are the rates for three years first year is 33.33 percent second year will be 44.45 third year will be 14.81 percent and finally fourth year will be 7.41 for one percent for five years depreciation first year is 20 percent second is 32 third is 19.20 fourth is 11.52 fifth is 11.52 sixth is 5.76 and so on with seven years with 10 years with 15 years and with 20 years okay the mid-year convention assumes that the asset is not placed in service and so does not start depreciating until mid-year this is why you notice the first year percentage is lower which is 33.33 percent than the next year's percentage of 44.45 percent in the above table now we take an example of MACRS mid quarter convention mid quarter convention that means for the years three year depreciation first year rate is 58.33% second year is 27.78 third 
third year is 12.35 and in the final year fourth is 1.54 for five years depreciation first year is 35 second is 26 third is 15.6 fourth is 11.01 fifth is 11.01 .01, and the sixth is 1.38 and so on for seven years these are the values for 10 years these are the values for 15 years these are the values and for 20 year these are the values this above is a table of mid-quarter convention it assumes that the asset starts depreciation in the middle of the quarter therefore starting percentage of 58.33% is higher than that of the half year convention because the asset is placed in service in the first quarter it begins depreciating earlier deferred taxes a deferred tax item is used to reduce a company's income tax a deferred tax item is created after receiving a net operating loss the IRS allows a company to offset the loss against taxable income in another year. The annual can be carried back two to five years or carried forward 20 years. Let's take a look at an example. This is the income statement for 2010, 11, and 12. 10, we have earning before taxes, 750. Taxes at 40% minus 300. So net income, 450 2011 earning before taxes 1500 taxes at 40 percent minus 600 net income 900 2012 net income is negative thousand taxes zero so net income is minus 1000 so this company had a loss in the year 2012 they applied for two years carry back and it allowed the company to offset 2012 losses by receiving a refund on taxes paid in prior tax years how let's take a look at 2010 beginning balance was 1000 taxable income 750 tax refund got 300 so annual balance left to use for next year to be used for next year is 250. Annual applied in 2011. Beginning balance is 250. Taxable income 1500. Tax refund at 40% is 100. We are left with zero balance for annual net operating loss. That should be carried forward. We do not have anything to carry forward after this. Folks, all this information comes from uh, a book, Financial Modeling and Valuation, written by Paul Pignatero. Thank you.